sorry, everybody. Um, we're on to 4.3 now. I just quickly want to go over something. The last lesson we were talking about the number of rectangles under the graph, which gave you the area. And we had all the widths of the rectangles being the same. This chapter starts with what's called a Riemann sum. Um, a Riemann sum. which is essentially this, the only thing you need to remember for this class and probably moving forward, is that the Riemann sum states that the width of the intervals, i.e. the rectangles, do not have to be the same. They can be different widths. As long as you make an infinite amount of them, you still get the area. So you can change the widths of the rectangles to fit the graph appropriately. We're not going to go into that in this class, um, but what you need to remember is the Riemann sum, this definition, the limit, and this little delta here with these double lines is called the norm of the width. But basically, it just it's the width of the rectangles, um, saying they don't have to be the same. As that goes to zero, is the same as this going to infinity and going to infinity. The width, which is the height, sorry, times the width there, gives you and is equal to this, the integral of a to b f of x dx. So it's equal to the integral, which means the integral is equal to the area under f of x from a to b. So graphically, what that means is if this is your f of x and this is a and that's b, this integral represents that area, it's always back to the x-axis. So in short, the integral from a to b of f of x equals the area under the curve of f of x between a and b. That's it. That's what an integral is. And so this lesson is all about basic integrals and doing um, geometric shapes. We're not going to go into the Riemann sum stuff. So. Basic shapes, or geometric shapes, I guess I should have said, but that's okay, of definite integrals. And we call them definite integrals because they have this a value, which is called the lower limit, and this b value, which is the upper limit. And we're going to go into some properties today about this too. So let's start with what an integral actually means is or visually. So if I have the integral from 1 to 3, 4 dx. All right. And so we know that means our f of x, our function is 4. y is equal to 4. Which, think about it, y is equal to 4 is that. The horizontal line at four. I'm asking for the area between one and three. So one, three. I want to know that area. Well, what shape is that? That is a rectangle. So it's going to be the height, four times the width, which is two. That gives me eight. So what that means is this integral. A different color, the value of this integral here is equal to 8. Okay. Hold on. Oh, the letter's constant. The integral from 0 to 2, x2, tx. You should always write your variable of integration because as you go on, you'll see. There can be more variables. You can have more complex integrals. What does the graph of x plus 2 look like? Well, it's essentially a straight line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1, 1 over 1. Looks like that. I'm evaluating it from 0 to 2. Guess where 2 is? 
So I want this area here. Now, that is a trapezoid, if you remember what the area of a trapezoid is. Great. But you could also, different color here. I can break it up into two bits. This area. And it's the bottom rectangle area. I just have to add those together. Well, rectangle, this area will be to the width times the height. Now, what is this number right here? That's two. So the height is two, which gives me four. All right. So when x is two, now that's the area of the green. I don't want the area of the this bit. That's a triangle. So the area there is one half base times the height. The base is this, which is two times the height. The height is this. Well, what is this value right here? When x is two, put in there. That should be four, right? So that is the point two, four. So this little height here, if this is two, there, this should be two as well. So basically that area is two. So what's the answer of this? It's going to be the green area four plus the triangle. All right. Let's see. Now, negative two to two root four minus x squared. Now, you will see that. The first two very simple shapes and the integral you'll see in the next lesson um, that's actually an easy integral to solve this integral with this root of 4 minus x squared is not a simple integral to solve so actually knowing how to do it with geometric shapes is a value if anybody remembers that is a semicircle between negative 2 and 2 positive root so you know it's this bit well that's a bad semicircle if you put x is equal to zero, you're going to get two right there. So, once again, we want to look for this area. Now, a couple ways to do this. We can just go the area of that semicircle. The area of this circle is pi r squared. And since it's half a circle, we'll just put a half. Well, one half pi. What's our radius? Is two squared, <clears throat> which is uh, two pi. Wow, it took too long. Um, so the value of that number is two pi. And leave this pi. Don't write two times six point or three point one four. And get whatever. This is two pi. Looks better. You'll see later on that has symmetry. This area here is equal to this area here. And then I'll, when we're solving integrals um, algebraically, that will pay off later on. So but we won't do that here because it's actually easier just to do with the formula. All right. So we're doing integral from negative 2 to 1. No, two x dx. All right. What does that graph look like? Well, that is essentially the graph of over here y is equal to two x, which has x intercept of the origin and a slope of up to like that. We're going from negative two to one. So now we got two parts. 
the area always goes back to the x-axis. So if you're below the x-axis, it's the stuff above it to the x-axis. Because remember, you're drawing those rectangles back to the x-axis. So let's do this area right here. One and a half the base and the height. The base is one. This bit right here. The height. When I put one into this function, I get two. So that is two there. Times two, which gives me one. Okay. This bit. Same thing. One half base times the height. The base is negative two. The height here is four. Right? If I put negative two into there, that distance is four. Now you can use the negatives or not. I don't actually care. But what you have to remember is that if you put that out. You have four. And this is the important part. When your area when your area is below the x axis must be negative. And that'll make sense when we do the algebraic part of it. Right now, you just have to accept it for me, okay? The next lesson is the algebraic part. So when it's below the x-axis, the area is negative. So in fact, this graph right here, the area is negative 4 plus 1, negative 3. So we wouldn't call it area. We would just say the value of this integral is negative 3, okay? Because you can't really have a negative area. All right, <clears throat> let's look at the page and look at properties of integrals. So these are very important, and this is the main thrust of this lesson. So properties of integrals, just like there's properties of derivatives and limits. Same with integrals, properties of integrals. That will allow you to solve complex integrals as we move forward. So if we have the Integral from a to a of f of x dx. What does that mean? It means if you have a graph, doesn't matter what the graph is, it's f of x, this is a. What's that area? It's zero because there's no width, right? We're going from a to a, there is no width. So if the upper and lower bounds match, the integral is zero. <clears throat> From b to a of x of x dx. Now, when you're evaluating integrals, usually it's always a to b, i.e., the lower bound is always going to be smaller than the upper bound. So you can switch those numbers, and when you do, the value of the integral becomes negative. So it's a negative integral from a to b 